Welcome to Historic Hole. My name is David, and this week joining me is Baki. Yo, what's going on, guys? And our topic this week, we're going to talk about The Thing. Oh, fuck yeah. The 1982 American sci-fi horror film directed by John Carpenter. I mean, the way they made it was fucking fantastic, bro. What was the shit where they, um, the scene where, like, the, uh... Was like the like someone's head and it's got the uh, spider legs and shit. Like, how the fuck did they make that happen? So, <laughs> well, what occurs in the scene is Norris, the character Norris, has the heart attack. Right. Yeah. And they take him into the infirmary, and then Doc is using the defibrillator on his body, and I think he does one charge on him, and then goes for the second one, and his body opens up. There's fucking teeth. That yeah, bite yeah, yeah. Doc's arms off. Autumn and, and I haven't gotten to that part yet. It's it's fucking insane. And um, yeah. and then they shoot the, the you know the body with the flamethrower, and when that happens, the bot the head like separates from the body, and like falls down to the floor, and then it it, it, it spider legs. Yeah, very gory scene, bro. Spider legs come out of the head, and then it becomes sort of like its own thing, and yeah. it starts running off, and then they. Before it can get away, they flamethrow it. They're like, how do they make the that shit happen? How do they practically? Yeah, do you just like... I have like, no idea. <laughs> fuck, dude. Like, they had to do that shit, like, frame by frame. Like, cause, I if mean, it was did they have CGI actually, back then? It, it was, the closest that you get to CGI in the movie is the, like, sort of claymation towards the end. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But the, uh, that was practical, so that seemed like it was you know, done using either animatronics or some sort of puppetry. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It was, yeah, pr- but it was practical, you know. It wasn't just generated in a computer. 1982, you know, it was pretty limited back then. Dude, but it was so fucking clever. Well, see, what's what's great about it is that it's like, you know, what, in my mind, what's great about it is there's two things going on. You have like that insane gore, right? Dude, it's just yeah. insane level of gore, practical effects. That's just like there's like green shit and like it was insane. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's indescribable. You know what I mean? It's probably some of the closest shit that you get to like what you would call like you know like a, uh, uh, the dude that did uh Cthulhu and all that shit. What do you call him? Uh, <laughs> fuck. Can't remember his name. Bro, I'm just sitting there like fucking drunk as fuck, 3 a.m., watching that movie, and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on, bro? This shit is crazy. So, uh, uh, Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft. So, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but his stuff is like always like really sort of kind of that indescribable sort of horror type shit. And so, I think that like this movie actually kind of gets pretty close to some of that sort of stuff that he's doing with his, his, uh, novels but anyway uh what i like so you you have that you have the intense gore right right but then on the other side of it you also have this real psychological component right you have this paranoia who's infected Mm -hmm. who's not you know and the whole idea behind the thing you know is that it imitates humans or whatever organism exactly that should scare the hell out and so how would you ever tell and so, obviously, they come up with in the movie clever ways to tell, but, you know, it's just that the idea itself is pretty terrifying and pretty, it makes you kind of paranoid, right? You're sitting around with people, you're just like, how do I know this person? Yeah, no, nah, like man, like, Autumn and I monster. were talking about, like, like, we, we, like, in this situation, we would just kill our, all, like, you know, off ourselves, like, in the beginning. Fuck all that. I'm not trying to go through all that shit. Having to see some Resident Evil type shit. Fuck that, man. I don't know, man. You gotta have, you gotta have a will to survive. <laughs> Dude, that shit is insane. I mean, if you're in Antarctica, you know, I mean, you gotta have a will to survive. You know, there's a and there's a certain level of danger and like thing that you're going into with that. So it's like they know what they're getting into. They know they might not be coming back for one reason or another. Probably not that reason, but you yeah. know what I'm saying. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, that's what I love about it is it's like it's a mixture of a great concept, a great sort of sci-fi horror concept, and then on top of it, like some of the most insane, intense gore and like practical effects that you'll ever probably see. Yeah. You know, and so it's just a mixture of those things, and I think that's just what makes it brilliant. For the 80s, too, that was, it was really, 
Because it seems that was like an amazing movie. It seems like these days you get stuff that's like really well produced and has really great visuals and effects and all that stuff, but it's sort of short on the yeah. substance. And then sometimes you get stuff that's really heavy on the substance, that's really good, but they don't have the budget to really flesh out the idea entirely. So it's like I feel like the yeah. thing is one of these movies where it's like you kind of get both of those. It's just kind of a rare, you know, you know, kind of lightning in a bottle situation. You know, everything's CGI. Though. That's probably a lot of fucking money. It's not for everybody. You know what I mean? The thing Damn. is definitely not for everybody. I wouldn't recommend it for everybody, but like, you know, if you like sci-fi, you like horror, it's definitely worth a view. Oh, yeah. If you like either of those things, I think you'll get, you'll come out of it with some satisfaction. Um, and two, if you're just a fan of like practical effects and you've, I mean, you if you are a fan of practical effects, you fucking have heard of the thing. Yeah, I no. can't imagine there's a fan out there that would be like, oh, what? I, this is this movie I've never, you know, if you're into practical effects, I'm pretty sure this is one of the movies that people are always like, oh, my God, it's one of the best, you know. So, anyway, we can talk about it more. <laughs> I want to talk about the prequel, man. The prequel was um, prequel was amazing. I like how they showed, like, what happened at the Norwegian camp. And then, like, as soon as you watch, like, the OG thing, it's, like, it's like right after that. It's It's amazing how they did that. I like that. Well, yeah, and I think that it's, that was what was intriguing about the uh, the prequel when it came out, you know, because for years, you know, we only had the thing, so we didn't, we never knew what happened. Yeah, you know that they didn't really explore that. You know, you, your 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 imagination really does a lot of the work there, right? Yeah. When you see it, if you just watch, and that's the way I would view the movies. No, I like the is, way you gave it to me, man. Is you watch that eighty two first, so you can see the aftermath. And so then your imagination can be like, oh, well, what happened there? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so then you get a movie that can sort of explore that. But I really do think watching, if you watch the first, you know, the, the prequel first, it sort of, I think, ruined, because that, that scene with the dogs in the original one, like, is the first scene where the shit just gets that level of intense. Yeah. And there's nothing like that, I feel, in the prequel, like, that that is as shocking because in the prequel they're assuming you've seen that and so they kind of when they jump when they spring it on you it's not to me as shocking you know what i mean yeah okay now i see what the hell you're talking about yeah no that, that yeah you i had ex- that feeling you know what to i expect, had that feeling right yeah, when you no. come into the prequel so you kind of like okay i know what to look for but with that yeah. original one you don't know what's going on yet and so when the shit happens it's yeah. like what the fuck yeah, you know yeah, and no, so no 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 autumn so like 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 i said bro we watched the prequel first and like i just like this is my second time watching it and i was just like oh my god like this is like like i i know the intensity level that you're talking about like that shit was insane bro i was like oh my god like she doesn't even know what the fuck's about to happen bro like she doesn't even know like the og thing like she's only seen the prequel yeah and it's fucking insane bro and she's like enjoying the thing right now um we stopped in where they just killed the uh ginger guy the and they're oh, and they're okay. like back in back in camp house whatever and I've already seen like the doctor like lose his shit man goes insane just starts like swinging on things fucking I, just fucking up all the information that they fucking gathered bro yeah. like it's just fucking insane like what the hell are you doing yeah you know there's that component too that's again that's the paranoia right yeah like, no it's just like what the hell um uh, like uh the, the uh. So, you know, the uh, the prequel, there's something interesting about the production of that. And there's, like, don't get me wrong. I think I don't think the, the prequel is, is bad. Like, I don't think it's a bad movie. But what I do think is, like, there's definitely some issues with the production because it seemed like, from what I've read, they they did practical stuff for it. They tried to use practical effects and things. But a lot of the thing in that movie ended up being CGI'd. Yeah. And they're like, 
And there's this whole thing. Obviously, that's why people love the original one, right? Is all the practical stuff. So it seems like they were trying to do that. But somewhere along the way, like the studio or somebody says like, hey, this, this isn't convincing enough. You know, I really wish they would have been able to yeah. like, blend them, maybe. You know what I mean? Use the practical, but just enhance it with some CGI. Yeah. You know, don't just... But what they ended up doing is, like, everything is entirely CGI'd in, in the thing. It's and Most of it, uh, you know, ended up being CGI'd. So, and I think that was just a... Uh, maybe it was, like, a studio decision. I don't know. I, it's really... I didn't look too, too far into it, unfortunately. But No, man, it was like, it was like one of those... Uh you know, just one of those like crazy ass. I don't know. It, it was like it was more than I expected. Um, because I was thinking like, oh wow, like this is gonna be. But like at the same time, like now that you're saying it, like I I do understand like where you're coming from because yeah, the eighty two version like is fucking different and prequel is just kind of like it's it's just one of those movies where it does make you so feel like it's like trying to cling on to it. Mm-hmm. Like when it comes to the effects, but like they just like fucked it up, like on, on some low budget type shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know how to really go there, but <sighs> no, the, and it doesn't look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, Again, no, it's, it's not, not I don't bad. Think it's, bad, it's not bad, but it's like, it's just one of those things where it's like, you can just see the ways in which it could have been better, I guess. Like, you know what I mean? Where it's like, man, this would have been a slam dunk if you would have got, if you would have used yeah. like some practical or, you know, and don't get me wrong. I like, wanted to be more gory too, man. Like I was just like, like, you that's know, another like, complaint. I like think she I doesn't had. like, she doesn't understand what she's about to get into with like, when she sees like what you were talking about, the like the, the dog uh, scene yeah, is so bro, Yeah, intense. no, she was like, yeah, no, she the, did not. Like, she was just like, Oh my I God. Saw like, that, what? I was blown away that every, I've shown that this movie to several people that just, they are blown away by that scene just because of the intensity of it, how convincing the practical looks. Again, yeah. like you said, like how it just almost, it creates this indescribable thing. Bro, that you yeah. just are like, what the hell am I looking yeah, at? You man. know? And, and so, no movie, uh, no, there's a lot of movies out there that have fail, failed to do, you know what I mean? That makes them boring, right? This movie's not boring because of that. Like, it's it's very intense. And, like, and to me, the, the imagination, that's what's... Uh, there's a lot of movies out there that lack in certain areas, but they have this imagination put into it that I think is just great, right? Like if you can if you can put some imagination into things, you know what I mean? Something that I watch, I'm just like you put some you put some genuine thought into this, yeah. right? Like you know what I mean? You can tell like when there's some effort put in <clears> rather <throat> than just like oh no, it's just going to be we're going to be a love story or it's just going to be this or it's going to be something superficial whereas like this you can tell like People sat down. People thought about, yeah, like, man, how like, the fuck would this go down? No, you this know? was like, in, like, like just straight detail. Like, I mean, like, I mean, it, it like, it was just down to the, because I was thinking this was just going to be a bullshit movie. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like, I saw the fucking movie post. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, right. it looks some fucking semen. Budget, yeah, you know like, what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is this bullshit? But then, like, I, like just watching it, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, what the fuck is that thing? And, yeah. I'm, and I'm, like, thinking, like, oh, my God. Like, this is fucking insane, bro. Yeah. Like, and it's based in Antarctica. And, like, you know, you already have, like, what you, what you fucking know already if you're a conspiracy theorist about this shit. So, I mean, this shit really just hit home for me. I was like, oh, my God goodness man like what the hell and then like but i will say this bro they nailed it on the spaceship for the prequel for the oh, yeah. prequel they nailed it on the spaceship i felt oh, like the that. interior yeah no the no no because no, no, no. yeah, yeah. like my my girlfriend's just, just sitting there she's like oh my god like she's just like she's legit like blown away but like i mean you only get to see like a bit of the spaceship in the '82 version. Yeah, and it's from the outside. Yeah, like, it's you from don't the actually outside. Go inside of it, there's this weird, there's this weird thing. Before you go, any, let me just jump in real quick. There's this weird thing that they do with the prequel that I don't understand why they do it because it's just like a needless change that it just kind of ruins the continuity when you think about it. You're just like, why are you? Why? So anyway, in the original thing, 1982. They say in dialogue, and then they have videos of Norwegians using thermite to blow up the. Yeah, ice that did to, not happen. And so, but that's what they say. And then the prequel, they're like, no, they didn't use thermite. And it's just like, but we literally saw yeah, them no, doing bro, it. Like, there in was the a video version. I think like, that's why, where they fucked why, up. Why did you change that? And that's my only real 
big problem with the movie is the fact that they're just like needlessly because the like, director said something to the effect of like well thermite would have damaged the ship i'm like dude it's a fucking sci-fi yeah movie. it's a like, fucking I sci-fi chair what the <laughs> fuck do you mean it would damage yeah, the fucking like, get the fuck yeah. out of here what the hell like it was so, that's some bullshit that's a bu- no but, you know he fucked up and he knows he's fucked yeah, up and shit yeah, right? get exactly, the fuck out yeah, of here he's making excuses yeah bro. right get the fuck out of here well but, thermite uh, would have that's bullshit so here, here, listen to this theory, though. This I love this theory. I think this is probably a sound theory, too. Um, so the spaceship itself is not like the thing itself isn't like an alien, like a sentient alien, right? It's basically just like this organism that just replicates, right? And does what it needs right, to do to yeah. survive. It's not really like a conscious necessarily entity. Um, but the... Uh, the ship belonged to an alien or some other race or species that got infected oh my by God. the thing or it got on board and like caused chaos and the ship crashed on earth. So it's not even like the thing's ship. It's just a ship from another alien. Dude, race. what the fuck? Right? That's insane, bro. It's what? a cool, a cool theory. I think. It, oh I think my it, God, dude, my mind is blown right now. What the hell? Now, wow. Because you think like, and he says like, they could have been some cool ass aliens too. When you really think about it, and too, like all of the shapes and creatures that you see are part of its DNA. So things that it's replicated in the past, this thing is perpetuated so long. You know what I mean? That you're just seeing like. I think it's just like a space after parasite. echoes and after effects of previous creatures. So any of those like weird, like otherworldly things you see are just like are like maybe just like silhouettes or like versions of aliens they've copied before and stuff. Dude, that's insane. And so that's what's so brilliant. I love about it is like Blair says in the, in the 82 movie says something to the effect of like, it could have copied it. You know, it could have, Oh no, they're reading Blair's journal. It says it could have copied a thousand different life forms on a thousand different worlds. Like it, you know, this thing could have, it could perpetuate itself across the universe forever. Like, you know what that makes me, you know what that reminds me of? There's this one, um, found footage movie that's based on like the Apollo shit Apollo oh, 13 Apollo 18 Apollo 18 yeah, yeah 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 bro dude um like when you see like those kind of like mini miniature like spider looking motherfuckers bro like that shit kind of reminds me of like oh it just gives me the same thought as that like yeah. just like it just telling you that like there's like more than just like what you even like see on TV or just like come up with imagination like there's like actually like detailed ass like thought based creatures like it's it's just fucking insane bro so like that now that you say that bro that conspiracy theory oh my god that's like, insane yeah I think it's a good I think it's a good uh, theory like sort of head canon you know because they never you know that's what is also good about the movie too is like they don't i feel like they don't over explain it you know what i mean they give you just enough for your imagination to do sort of the rest of the work with it um and so yeah man like uh but what you're saying it's funny is apollo 18 it's like uh, i i enjoyed the movie like i thought it was a good concept it's like not but it's one of those where it's like there's definitely could have been like that could have been a lot better. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what I think. Because, man, like, like... There's so many play, where, places where they could have, yeah, like, it could have really been really cool. But, like, don't get me wrong. I think it was still a decent concept. Like, it... But, yeah, like... Dude, what? That conspiracy theory is fucking insane. Yeah, it's like it's just another di- a different type of alien ship. Yeah, I, I, I like that one. Because, like, it didn't really show, like... It didn't show, like, anything of, like, the creature, like, knowing how to, like, operate the ship or anything, bro. It just probably just, like, pressed a fucking, like, go button or or, or just, like, whatever. I, I, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. But that I, I fuck with that theory. I fuck with that theory. That's nice. So that just, like, pieces the whole thing together, like, perfectly. For me, at least. That makes it more complete. Yeah, right? Like, it, it's that's what's so cool about the movies. You see this, you have this window into this one conflict, but the concept itself is so, yeah, you can like think about it and, you know, it takes you places, that's right? The cool that, thing about fucking sci-fi fellas. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, I think that's the best part of that's uh, the best sci-fi has that aspect to it yeah. where it's like, it's not something that's trying to provide you an answer to anything about the universe, but what it is, is it's bringing up a question about the universe, something that you can think about. So, Blade Runner sort of the question there like in that what I love about that movie is the question is like so if you are basically in every way like a human like you've been made a copy right you're a replicant I did not understand that movie and I'm if you were honest. if you are in every way like a human right 
and so it's exploring sort of like the idea of like autonomy, right? Like we've engineered these people to do our work and they're like basically slaves to us. And so that's kind of like is exploring that there's sl- he, he breaks out. He doesn't want to do that work anymore. He wants to live a life. He wants to experience all of the things of the universe. Yeah. He's not really a bad guy. He just does bad things in service of his pursuit to live longer. You know, he, okay. Word. Trying, now you, you know, made me understand that. And shit. So okay. like, yeah, like at what point are the, is that emotion fucking valid? Like, you know, he's basically been a sl- engineered as a slave, but he doesn't want to live that life, you know? And so it's like he, he sees what's beyond that. You know, he has, you know, the last lines in the movie is like, you know, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. You know, he describes a few things and it's just like, you know, all those memories lost in time, like tears and rain. What he's saying there is just what everybody struggles with, right? It's just like, well, what's going to ha- happen? Well, like, you know, when I die you know and he's struggling with that like everybody struggles with their own mortality you know and so i don't know it's a i love the movie because it's just it's just asking that question you know it's not trying to answer it it's just begging the question like well if if he is in every way like us and has these feelings and emotions like is it valid is he is he a being just like us like is on the same level like you know what is and so it's just asking you that question. It's, I don't think it's trying to answer it. You know what I mean? You can come to your own conclusions about that. Some people might say, well, no, like we made him to just be a slave. He should just do what he's supposed to do. Some people may be like disagree and be like, no, I think he should be able to do. You know, we, we made him, but he's got these feelings. He's got autonomy to do these things. Well, he's clearly got emotions and an individuality to himself. To me, so like, you know what Star Wars does? It's a genre, yeah. it's a genre blend, right? It's sci-fi western samurai movie kind of wrapped into sort of one thing, right? George Lucas, you know, back in the day, sort of blended those ideas up and came out with Star Wars and it was a fucking hit. People loved it. Blade Runner is doing sort of a similar thing, just a little bit more pretentious. Like it's doing it with like noir and, and yeah, sci-fi and rather than sort of doing like a Western or something more like uh pulpy. I, I mean, I guess noir is pulp too, but still, um, you know, like sort of something a little bit more, uh, it's a little darker, right? Um, yeah. So that's what I like about Blade Runner. I just, I like, I, I also enjoyed uh, the first Blade Runner as well. It was like very, just like very deep and dark. Like it just had you questioning a lot. Um, did you watch the director's cut or did you watch the one with the both, voiceover? Both, both, both. Oh, wait, no, the voiceover? There's one, there's a version, the original theatrical version. I don't watch that version. Nobody likes that version. Um, why is it like just like does it fuck up the whole vibe of like the movie or something like well, yeah it changes it you know what i mean it's a different movie and he's explaining things that like the don't really need to be explained like the movie shows oh, you okay, yeah, it's what's just going on if you're talking. paying attention you know and so it's sort of spoon feeding you plot and stuff like that which is you know who like who wants to do that um i mean, I mean it's a long movie bro i mean you, you introduce that movie to anybody else if you to play like the you know the uh uh uh, uh voiceover jaunt that that probably helped them out a lot. Uh, it's probably elderly though, you know. <laughs> well, I maybe mean, you know it just depends on your level of attention and stuff. You know, some people I I like to read movies. You know, and I may have sounds pretentious, but like I like to I like when a movie's not telling me exactly what's going on. Like they're letting me interpret the actions what that characters are doing on the screen because like sometimes it's not straightforward you know what i mean and sometimes people's have motivations and they're lying and they're saying so it's like letting things like that play out and letting me sort of like try to figure out if a character is being dishonest you know what their Ooh, motivations yeah. are so like i prefer that versus like when somebody just I like comes right out and about. says like i'm going to do this or like i'm come i'm the bad guy and I, here's my plan you know it's just like just show them and what they're doing you know you don't like have to necessarily beat you beat us over the head with an explanation you know is it really like that what like like the voiceover yeah and the, i mean it, it, like i'm pretty sure the very beginning he's like explaining like what a blade runner is and all this stuff where like oh. you fucking figure it out like in the first 10 minutes like they call him in and you know it's like you don't actually i'll fall i'm sorry i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> burping on the fucking podcast. come on so, let's get serious on this. <laughs> I apologize. Um, yeah. So the original thing actually had a uh, horrible reception. I don't know if you're aware of that, but like people, uh, 
didn't really like it. No, oh, when it came to that version of the movie? Um, it probably get on my nerves, too. Well, the original thing. What? Yeah, when it came out in 1982, had a... a the plot was... Cri- Listen to this. So, um... Dude, what? Watching that now. I guess because watching that now. But I mean, like... Dude, what? Well, listen... Yeah, exactly. Talk about aging well. Like, it aged so well. Listen to these reviews, though. This is how bad it was received at the time. Some reviewers were dismissive of the film, calling it the quintessential moron movie of the 80s. Instant junk and, a re- and wretched excess. Starlog's Alan Spencer called it a cold and sterile horror movie attempting to cash in on the genre audience against the optimism of E.T., the reassurance of Star Trek II, the technical perfection of Tron, and the sheer integrity of Blade Runner. That's fucked up. That's funny, man. This guy's just pulling out all of the fucking names to throw at it against it. Don't get me wrong. Star Trek II and Blade Runner hold up. Tron does not <laughs> hold Tron up. Tron was kind of ass. Uh, the, I liked the sequel, to be honest with you. But, like, I didn't like the fucking... The original one's just so goddamn goofy. Yeah, nah, man. Like, I, I love Jeff Bridges, man, but it's a, it's a slow... I can't get through it. Like, it's just so fucking boring. <laughs> but the, I like the I liked the remake. I thought it was cool. Like, all then they were doing the de-aging. It looks really weird and video gamey, but still. Um, the plot was criticized as boring and undermined by the special effects. Los Angeles Times Linda Gross said that the thing was bereft, despairing, and nihilistic, and lacking in feeling, meaning meaning the character's deaths did not matter. Spencer said it featured sloppy continuity, lacked pacing, and was devoid of warmth or humanity. Um, You know, some of that might be valid, but, like, at the same time, like, they're really, like, you know, come on. Like, the movie's not trying to be... You know, you got to kind of figure out what the movie's up to. Like, the movie's not trying to do some of those things. Like, it's not trying to be a warm movie. It's in fucking Antarctica. Yeah, dude, bro, what? <laughs> like, come on. Like, I think he probably just... David Anson of Newsweek felt that the film... That's insane, bro. ...felt that the film confused the use of effects with creating suspense and that it lacked drama by sacrificing at the everything at the altar of gore. And don't get me wrong. Like you said, it is gory, but, like... I feel like it's used in a way that is meant to, like, it's not just, like, oh, look at these intestines or, like, look at these guys' guts. Like, it's like it's like a fucking alien creature that's just a gory thing. Like, it, yeah, it's no, just I mean, part of the... Like, it's not, like, necessarily, like, trying to be gory. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the concept of it is a gory concept. Like, what it would have to do, you know, if it's, like, this sort of, like... Lovecraftian sort of like fucking alien thing. Like it would have to be something like that. Like you just can't not go there. <laughs> um, like so anyway, Chicago readers Dave Kerr considered the dialogue to be banal and interchangeable, making the characters seem and sound alike. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. The Washington Post Gary Arnold said it was a witty touch to open the thing having already overcome the Norwegian base, defeating the type of trap seen in the 1951 version. Well, yeah, so this, that's the thing. It's like that thing. It, is, it's based on the thing from another world, I think is what it's called. Wait, there's a 1951 version? Yeah. No way. Yep. And so that's like kind of almost like that movie in a way is sort of exploring what happened at that base, right? in a way so um and so they're trying to like sort of say the movie's like hey we already went through all that <laughs> you know at in that base oh okay like like they just want it in like a different location this time or some shit well no in the original one they are in antarctica okay but is he getting pissed off at the fact that, like, when, like, supposedly the second the thing comes out, it's just more of, like, an originator of, like, the first one than, like, than, like, well, this guy, I think, like, I think this guy, this Gary America. Arnold was saying it was actually a good touch to have, have it open that way, where it's, like, already, something's already happened. Yeah. You know, and, like, he was actually, I think, giving it props for that. Oh, okay. Um, that's one of the few, yeah, positive things. Roger Ebert considered the film to be scary, but offering nothing original beyond the special effects. What? Which is, you know, Ebert. He hates a lot of things. <laughs> Whatever. 
<laughs> um, this is back in like '82. They were probably expecting it to be like way better. Like, oh, you know, I don't know, man. That that movie was fucking amazing. Yeah, and you know, I don't get me wrong. I think what they're saying is like this. Here, here's what Ebert says: uh, They lack the characterization, you know, like of the character. The characters lack characterization, offering basic stereotypes. To just existed to be killed, which maybe in some cases is the, is the you know what happened there. But I feel like there's just not enough time. You know, like the movie is not. We're not trying to characterize a lot of these guys beyond maybe like Blair and. Uh, and uh, McCready, like I feel like those are maybe the only two that get some time to sort of we get to sort of get. But anyway, I think, uh, yeah, for the most part, like they're not there to be really that deep. You know, it's like we don't. And they, their dialogue, I mean, I feel like they react in the ways that you know people would react. And I do think the the a few of the characters did try to sort of make it their own with the material. I you know I feel like some of the characters stood out like uh, I think it was Windows. Yeah, no, you got Keith David in that bitch. Yeah, exactly, Keith David. Fuck, Childs. I think it's Childs. Childs, yeah, he played Childs. But they had fucking. I don't think it's Windows. Windows, is that one dude that gets paranoid, he goes for the the army guy. The army guy. Uh. He goes for the guns. God, the one dude, yeah, I think he's like, I uh, can't fucking remember his name. God damn it. There, let me look up the cast. Oh, Palmer. Fucking Palmer. He Palmer. was, he's the guy that's always smoking the joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like. But he's probably seen some shit, though. That's probably why. That's why I like that guy. Like, he was seemed like a kind of a, you know, he was, yeah, kind of a stereotype, just stoner dude, but like, you know. He seemed like he made it his own. Yeah, no. Nalls didn't, you know, he's not really. But, yeah, Wilford Brimley, you know, he's he played Blair. Um, yeah, he was great, you know. McCready. Uh, Kurt Dude, Russell. Yeah. That was, McCready was amazing. Yeah, I don't know, Kurt Keith Russell, David was, like, my guy, though. Because, like, in the end, oh, like, yeah, you dude. don't know. Um, I love it. And it's always it's ambiguous. You don't yeah. know who you don't know if he's infected. A lot of people think that he is, and there's tons of evidence that points to it being him infected. But there's also evidence that he's not. So I, that's what yeah, I love no, about the that's movie, what I'm man. It just leaves it open, and you can just debate. Yeah, did they survive? Did something? You know, did they in some way survive? Did uh you know the McMurdo station get their fucking you know uh you know SOS? Like did uh. Or were they just like, you know, Kurt Russell says, like, maybe we shouldn't, you know, or it's like, we're going to, uh, yeah, it's like, something just like, die it out here. Yeah, exactly. It's like, how will we, how will we survive or something like that? And Kurt Russell says, like, maybe we should or some shit like that. So it's like saying, like, maybe, yeah, we should just die out here. Let the thing, if it's in one of us, just get frozen up. The, yeah, no, I mean, I don't. But somebody would come to the base eventually, you know what Oh, I mean? yeah, no, so, no, 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 no. Um. No, I kind of, I kind of like that idea more. Um, like, I, I kind of just like, I'm, I'm hoping they did just like, cause in that world, bro, if they did get help, bro, that like the spread would be fucking crazy, bro. Like, they would go back to America, get oh, yeah. their they, shit straight. They'd have like the, the di or something, the diagram or. Yeah, like, no, that, that shit would spread like fucking wildfire, man. Like that, that would be all over the place. God, it'd be terrifying. Like, oh. you, just imagine, bro. Like, you're just upstairs. You're about to like, you're about to have sex. Like, you're 16 years old. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Or I guess they wouldn't show that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Eighteen just like, years old. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Eighteen <laughs> years old. Fucking. Uh. Uh. You fucking. Yeah. 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 Like you're about to have sex. All of a sudden, boom. Fucking girl tits just like goes. And Two like you just like, like shoot out of your Yeah, chest bro. And, and like around you. And like, oh my god, dude. Yeah. And like, like the whole body just like dis just like starts dissolving into. Yeah, you, uh, man. Oh you, yeah. my. <laughs> God. Yeah, that'd be disgusting and horrifying. I would hate to just be that guy who gets his like dick like like bitten off oh, like shit. <laughs> that would be insane. Oh dog. yeah, you'd hate that, really? Dude, no, well, just more than that. I mean just be in that situation, butt ass naked, yeah. bro. Like that would be horrible. A horrible way to go for sure. Oh my god. The things they could do. I think there's probably some comics out there that explore stuff like that. Like what if like the Oh thing my is, god. Like, there's probably got to be some stuff because it's so popular you know oh my like, yeah no it's a cult following so there's got to be comics and like graphic novels or some shit 
some like uh-huh. crazy shit like guys like girls are out or a guy and girl out on a picnic like and it's like nighttime they're looking at stars and all of a sudden like he turns over and just sees her just like split the fuck open like yeah. and is eating him like that shit is insane dog yep uh, it's a it's a horrifying concept that makes you paranoid if you think about it too much. Nah, man, I was so paranoid, bro. I looked over at Autumn, I was just like, "What if your face?" <laughs> yeah, just dude. Like, right I just now. started thinking, like, like hypothetical. Like, she just fucking turns over and just splits open, and just like, just <gasps> you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh my god, <laughs> shit's insane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nightmare shit. So there's this. It was funny. It's like there's a game that came out, like a thing game for PS2, that I played through back in the day because I fucking you know I love the thing. Yeah, why not? Uh, oh, it's a game. I'm like, oh shit. And yeah, you know, the, it's a game. You know, it's not like the greatest thing ever. Um, you know, you get people like you'll pick up people along the way, and like they might, you know, uh, be the th- be the thing or not, and you can make them take like a test, you know, and. You know, the test uh, explodes, like, they, they'll, they like, <laughs> you know, just start, Jesus. like, turning into, like, a monster. And uh, and that's the thing, like, I, I you know, it's it's all right. But the, what I don't like is when they what they did kind of with the prequel and with the game was, like, they, they made the thing into, like, a monster. Th- and it's, like, it's not really a monster, yeah, you know no. what I mean? It's, like, it's just this, what it does is horrifying. It's just, like, an organism thing, um, basically. And, uh, yeah, it's like, so when they monster it up, it kind of becomes sort of like a, I don't know, like it, it's sort of, def- it's sort of missing the point. Anyway, um, the, the game was fun, but like at the end, you like, you defeat like a big thing monster, you know, like, yeah, and, nah, bro. And you take it down and then you get picked up in a helicopter and, and it McCready's flying the helicopter and it's like the game ends right there. Like, you're just like, what the fuck? And so I don't know. I don't think that's canon. You know what I mean? The game is just like they made it. But like, oh, it's just, okay. Where, I was like, like, wait, what? So then like. But it makes you think about it. Like, so is he the thing? <laughs> like, if he survived, you know, you think he's got to be the thing, right? Nah, man. If that's the case, it was probably child. <gasps> oh, wait. But child but showed you, results that he, that he wasn't. Um, but you actually find child's body in the game. He's dead. He's the only one there. You don't find McCree. You don't body. think the PS2 version told you like what the fuck actually happened after that movie ended? What's that? Like okay, so Childs is dead. Childs R- is Childs. dead. Childs. Yeah. Ch- fuck. Childs is dead. Yeah. Keith David is fucking gone. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. Um, and then he makes it out, and so like that's just like you like just in the setup, or or or. Yeah, no, like, McCready makes out alive, he, like, he kills Child, yeah, Childs? Childs. Jesus Christ, man. It doesn't look like, he, like, Childs is just sitting there where where you leave him in the movie, you know? Like, he's just sitting there frozen, like, basically, and they say he's deceased, like, your character comes up to you, like, you're going to investigate what happened. I think you go to the Norwegian base first, and then you go to <sighs> that base second. And then you go on from there to, like, other places that you don't see in the movie. Um, I don't know. That, that makes it, like, way cooler then. It's just, like, I don't know how McCready survives. But, like, yeah, it's like he's apparently survived. But, like, yeah, it's the dude with the hat. You know, you see his fucking hat. Like, his goofy-ass hat. That, that's what he's wearing in the helicopter. You're like, what the fuck? It's really weird. Um, maybe so he is a parasite. Yeah, maybe he is the thing. That's why I was like, I, what are you trying to say with that ending? <laughs> like, yeah, like, and I think they're just doing the same thing. They're just like, eh, is he? <laughs> like, it's kind of what they're doing with it, but That's I don't know. Insane. So we can go for about 45 minutes. You want to wrap it up there? Oh, shoot. Yeah, no, why not? Yeah, we've been going for a minute. I, mean, I think we covered most of it. We talked about the thing. We talked about the prequel. Oh, my God. We talked about Blade Runner. If I could just say one more thing, bro. Say I kind of... I, 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 I fucked with the idea of, like, in the prequel where they leave her out in the snow. She just sits in that car. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, it's it, there's no gas in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, she wouldn't have been able to get far. So, it's just, like, her just, like, chilling in there. But at the same time, I feel bad for her because she like she went through so much and like she was actually she was one of the, she was the like the like the person to like act fast and like know what the fuck was happening, 
me and my girl just ruined for her, bro. I was just like, damn, man. She caught up. She knew what it was. Like, she was able to tell that, like, it does not fuck with metal. So, that's how she was able to, like, split the people apart in, or whatever. So, yeah. like, at least know that, like, if, like, if someone was the parasite, let me look through your teeth to see if you got any fucking, like, metal shit. Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah. have any feelings and because it wouldn't carry over. Yeah. So, that was really nice. I fucked with that. And it kind of made me feel bad for her because, like... Like, you just kind of think that, like, well, you're also just hoping, like, she never had, like, a parasite in her. You know what I'm saying? Like, she just, she she never got in contact with it. And she was just, like, like, at least while I was watching, I was just hoping, like, she'd fucking make it out alive, honestly. But then at the, at, in the end, like, when, like, she's just sitting there and, like, there's no gas in the tank. I'm just like, damn, she just died in that bitch. And then, boom, it shows fucking the beginning of the of the thing. Yeah, I think there's a possibility that she makes it. There's, like, a base. Yeah, the Russian base, that's 50 miles. But, I mean... Yeah, I mean, they kind of leave it that's open. That's 50 miles, bro. Like, how the fuck leave, do you make that shit it, out? like, leave that... Like, she's on her way there, but, like, she's just, like, in a really slow... And, like, she doesn't, might not have the gas to get there. Like, that's it's what like, I'm saying. It's, like, nah, it leaves man. it open, but it, she tries to get there, I think. Um, For real? I think so. I, ha- I haven't seen it. If, if, like, if it's, like, a conspiracy, I could believe it. You but know, she, you but know, like she, she, she died. She died. She but she to. probably does die. Yeah. You know? Like just the conditions out there, like not looking good. No, I, I had a lot of hope for her. I was just like, dude, she's going to make this shit alive. Because like the W tactic of like remembering that his uh, earring was on the left side instead of the right. So when he grabs for the right side, she's just like, it was on your other ear. And so that's the parasite fucking up. So you really see like yeah. how like this parasite's trying to like be this guy bro and it's just like it's fucking insane bro like oh my god yeah yeah. i fault for talking a lot (laughs) that's why you're here it's a podcast you're supposed to talk bro you're supposed to do that Uh, (laughs) anyway i guess that we're gonna wrap it up so just you know the uh typical way i go out you know all the usual plugs go follow us me on Instagram, Twitter, at Historical. Go to our Spotify, Apple pages. Give us fucking reviews, five stars. Follow it. Do all that stuff. It always helps, man, with the algorithms. I don't know what else to tell you to do to help us uh, other than just, like, give us money. <laughs> you know, yeah, just send man. it right to my cash app. Or Patreon. Yeah. Well, let's start the Patreon soon. <laughs> Get the Patreon going soon. Fuck yeah. Um, and yeah, and so then we can demand we can demand money there. <laughs> Fuck yeah. We'll make extra content and then yeah, we'll man. demand money for it. Talking about Habitat. some like cool shit right here. Cool make, shit makes you want to think about it. You know, it makes you just want to sit back and just be like, just pause and just be like, oh fuck, man. That was. Let really, me get back into this though. It's like really insightful, bro. It's like really smart. <laughs> do it uh anyway yeah so go do all that shit and anyway uh yeah i think that's it do you want to say goodbye yeah man i hope you guys have a blessed one uh it's been nice being here with my man david um yeah i, I really appreciate like being all, all over here doing this shit i've always wanted to be in podcast so just hope you guys are having a nice one stay safe out there and yeah be blessed yes